Hey there, fellow trucking friends. It's Maker Maria, your independent trucker door designer. <laughs> I don't know why I always think that's so funny when I say that. Your independent trucker door designer. Like, you know, it's some mystery or something crazy that I'm up to. Because, you know, I'm just plain old everyday Maria. Making Maria, though. Because we're making stuff and I, it's thankful Thursday. I love thankful Thursday. It's one of my very favorite days of the week because I love to give stuff away. Oh my goodness, I love to give stuff away. So, hey, Maddie, welcome to our chuckin' party on Thankful Thursday. Hey, Missy, oh my gosh, Missy, I've missed you. <laughs> Missy, I've missed you. It's been one of those, those days, ladies. Um, so, welcome, everybody. It's Thankful Thursday, and what happens on Thursdays is when you share my video 10 times into the world out there in that big old Facebook world, um, we give away either our project or stuff. I can't tell you what the stuff is because it's super secret but we either give away the project or we give away stuff but in order to um, give something away we have to send that video out into the world ten times but anybody can play the game to win the stuff <laughs> you don't have to share the video to win it is not conditional Facebook doesn't allow me to do that which I wouldn't do it anyway well I guess I did do it I used to do it rambling okay stopping closing lips okay so it's thankful Thursday we're gonna give away this cute little project that I'm making because we've kind of been on a welcome theme this week and we don't really want to give that up yet because we've been having so much fun with welcome I've made some fun little welcome signs I need your advice on one of them this evening I'm not sure if I should add something to it or not so I'm gonna show it to you you guys can let me know if you think I should add it but tonight we're actually gonna make a pillow with ink um, and it's gonna be a welcome pillow but let me show you here quick um, this is the pillow that we're making tonight but this is the sign I made on slate and I love me some slate Missy had family come in and you started a new job oh my goodness Missy that's an awful lot to do at once and I've been sick holy cow Missy you've been busy oh well, I hope you're feeling better it's not any fun when you don't feel well not any fun at all so this was a really pretty welcome sign that I made on Slate. I'm just gonna say out loud, be careful on Slate. Okay, because Slate is super soft and you can completely ruin your transfer when you when you chalk on Slate. Um, I only use transfers on Slate that are well loved, meaning they have been used many, many, many times. And so they're well loved, they've been used many times and if it got ruined, I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Don't ever put a brand new transfer that you had been waiting by the mailbox to get the first time out on Slate. Because Slate is such a soft stone, what happens is when you pull your transfer off, it picks up the little pieces of the stone in the transfer and you're, you can't get them out. So be very careful on Slate. It can be done. I wax the heck out of it. Um, and then I use a very well-loved transfer that I fuzz, fuzz, fuzz the heck out of. Um, and then I actually sealed this one because it's a welcome sign. So my question, hey Carol, welcome to our chuckin party. We're continuing our uh, theme for welcoming people into our home, being warm and cozy. So this was the sign I made, but I had this bow. And I'm trying to decide, oh, it's backwards, if it needs the bow. So what do you think? My big question of the day, bow or no bow? Bring it down a little bit. So this is it with the bow. Hey, Linda. Welcome, welcome. It's Thankful Thursday. We're giving stuff away tonight. Okay, so with the bow, and I would just hot glue it on, or no bow. I like it both ways. I'm not a big bow person, but I do really love this sign. Well, I love the, I love the black and the white. I've always loved the black and the white. The stark contrast between the two has just always been my thing. So what do you think? Bow? No bow. Hey Mary, welcome. Bow? No bow. Those are your choices. So if you could help me out, I would appreciate that. I'm going to set this aside. Um, last night's welcome sign project, we were having the whole debate about leaves or no leaves. I figured out what my problem was with the leaves. They were going in the wrong direction down here, so I washed them off and reversed them, and then then I felt they went the right way. So I did add some to the top. I've also sealed this board as well. Um, 
So this one is all good to go and hang outside. It can get wet. It's not the chalk isn't going to go anywhere and it's going to be a beautiful, very cheery little sign on someone's front door to say or house, not necessarily on the door, to say welcome and please ring my doorbell because we're a happy house. Well, hello. Good night, mom. You just wanted to say goodbye to the ladies. No, I didn't. I just wanted to I say goodnight. I said goodnight to you upstairs already, so don't be telling me you didn't want to come down. Yeah, I just, I'm just stalling. You're stalling? Yeah. Why are you stalling? Because I don't want to go to bed. Oh. And I can't wait till Illinois. Oh, okay. Well, go to bed. Good night, dear. Love you. Okay, everybody says yes, Bo. All right. Yes, Bo. Yes, Bo. Good. Obviously, yes. Good night, Charlie. So I guess I'm putting the bow on. So thank you very much. Okay, so inking is super simple. So we're going to throw this. This is a lumbar pillow. I don't know what else to call them. The long skinny pillows. And um, I like to buy them with a pattern on them. You can buy them without a pattern on them. Chalk Couture sells some beautiful canvas pillow covers. Beautiful. Really nice quality. Uh, you can wash and wash and wash. Um, but my formal living room is gray. It's kind of a tan gray. Um, and I have lots of grays and yellow. So these are the two, three colors. Look, navy came out to play. These are the three colors kind of in my formal living room. The couch is gray, the furniture is gray, everything is gray. So I was wanted to make a little welcome pillow. Because it's my, you know, it's kind of the front room that when you walk into my house, you see. So what the heck, why not make a welcome? Unless, of course, one of you happens to obtain this beautiful pillow because pillows are easy to ship because I just ship them without the pillow insert and then you're good to go. So we are using the welcome transfer that we used the other night, sticking with our welcome theme. This is the piece that got cut off. So this has two welcomes on it and a home. This is a C size transfer, which means it's 12 by 18. Sure. It's 12 by 18. Um, it's C size, so it's $24.99, and it is really versatile because obviously it has two different fonts. You can do welcome with the, the home script, so you have, you know, some contrasting fonts. You just do the welcome. It's got some pretty nice versatility to it. So this is the welcome transfer. I am going to cut off the home with my new fancy transfer trimmers that I love. Oh my gosh. I don't know why. A scissors should not make a girl so happy, right? But uh, it's the simple things in life, lady and gentle, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure Jacob is here. Or if he's not here, he's coming. He was just eating his dinner because I spent practicing going live. So I got to see him eating dinner. <laughs> All right, so we're going to stick this right on our pillow cover, and we're just going to ink it in navy. Nothing fancy. Now, what I have in here inside of my pillow cover is I have ink mats. I'm going to show you what an ink mat is. So this is how an ink mat comes. It's a big long uh, 11 by 17 inch long mat that is sticky on one side. It has a plastic cover on it and it's sticky. I cut them to fit them in things. It comes in this size and it comes this one's ugly, this one's new. <laughs> it comes in an 18 by 18 size as well, which is really nice for big pillows. Um, I haven't used this one as much as I have used this size. This size gets much more use in my home than the big one does because I, I've cut it up. Most of the things I ink are smaller. So I'm cutting it into slices like this. And then I'm sticking them in a t-shirt, I'm sticking them underneath in a canvas bag, in a pillow, um, underneath a tea towel, those types of things. Oh, the birthday girl is here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We all need to take a moment and sing happy birthday to Miss Debbie from Texas. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Debbie, happy birthday to you. Wish I was with you celebrating today, but there's a lot of states in between us. So I hope you had an amazing day for an amazing woman. Okay, sorry, I digressed. So I have my ink mats in here already. I have them in there already because they're two pieces and I needed to kind of line them up right. And I am um, going to stick our transfer on. So. I've gotten so far ahead of myself, it's not even funny. 
I am making Maria, your independent Chuck Couture designer, and what the heck am I talking about, right? I'm talking transfers and Chuck Couture and ink and paste and all this crazy chalk stuff. So Chuck Couture is an amazing company that makes adhesive silk, ooh, you know what, I didn't write in the back, adhesive silk screen transfers that are reusable. Um, you can use them over and over again. And because they are reusable, they are a very good investment. So unlike using your Cricut machine to cut out a vinyl uh, stencil and doing all, if you've ever done that, all that weeding to get all that excess vinyl off with that little tiny weeding tool, <clears throat> nightmares. <laughs> with this product, you don't have to do that because it's already all done for you. So it's good to go. Um, you can use them over and over again. Then that's the other difference with a Cricut vinyl stencil that you cut out it's a one-time use you're not going to get um, multiple you're gonna have to keep cutting it out and weeding it every single time you want to use it that's been my experience with cutting my own crickles cricket stencils this i find much more enjoyable <laughs> much more lovable much easier to use i don't have to think about it um, so i take my transfer and put it face down this is a large transfer it's very long and narrow um, this is 18 inches long so be very careful when you take it apart because you do not want the back of your transfer to touch itself if it touches itself you risk putting holes in your transfer when you go to take it apart so be super careful that you don't touch it to itself so I'm gonna carefully slide my backer sheet off now I wrote the name of my transfer on the back of my transfer and I did that because my transfer has two sides to it. One is very slick and one is kind of dull. The slick side is the side I'm going to put my transfer back on when I've washed it to store it. And that will keep my um, transfer in good repair. Um, I don't want to stick it to the wrong side of the backer sheet. So I write the name on the back so I know which side is the back. And I know, now obviously this one's kind of easy because it has the, the little notch cut out of it. This way I know what goes where. So I take my transfer carefully, because again, it's sticky. I don't want it to touch, and I'm going to put it on my pillow. Now, I like to use pillows with patterns on them because they help me line it up. Because <laughs> it has a line. <laughs> Makes it so much easier to line up my crazy transfer. Hey, Verge, welcome. I don't think I said hi to you yet, Verge. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I put my transfer down. I did not need to fuzz this transfer. Fuzzing is a step we use when we're uh, chalking on um, a different type of surface. And I am feeling to make sure that I have ink mat, and I don't. I do not have ink, oh yeah, I do. Do I? No, I don't. I do not have ink mat under the entire thing. So I'm going to pull my ink mat out. Because you gotta make sure that your ink mat covers the whole area. There we go. When you cut it into pieces, it's not always as easy. <laughs> So you just got to be careful that, um, you know, you, the ink mat does a couple things. First off, this is really thin fabric, which is kind of what I like about it. It's kind of a nice, like, cottony linen, um, but it's super thin. So if I go and I put ink on it, it is going to seep through from one side to the other side. And the ink mat, because it is this plastic, uh, sticky material, the ink mat prevents that bleeding from happening, which saves my fabric, my t-shirts, that kind of stuff. So what I am doing is I have it in here and I'm just kind of, you know, piecing it together because obviously it's, I've cut it smaller than the transfer that I'm using. So I'm just making sure it's kept together and sticking it down. My fabric sticks right to it so I don't have to worry about that bleeding. The other nice thing about it is it holds my fabric in place. And any wrinkles in my fabric disappear so I don't have to iron my material beforehand. Now you can totally, you know, if you're an obsessive ironer, feel free to iron your material before you do this. I don't like to iron. I grew up in a household where we ironed everything. Love you, Mom. I know you're probably watching tomorrow, Mom, but I do love you, but we ironed everything. So needless to say, as an adult, I don't particularly care for ironing. <laughs> I spent a lot of summers at an ironing board, being one of a very large, well, a larger family. Not as big as my husband's, but large family. We spent a lot of time ironing, when you iron everything. 
like pillowcases. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Underwear. Love you, Mom. <laughs> we ironed everything. Okay, so I have navy ink that I cannot get open because we have not used navy ink in a long time. And what happens when you don't use them and you don't clean them properly, I'm not going to get this bad boy open, um, the ink dries up and it sticks. I need a tool and I got a new tool to do this and of course, no I can't find it. So we got a plan B. Oh look, it's TV magic. I have a new one <laughs> and it just opened because <laughs> look, it's all bright and shiny and new. <laughs> I'm going to take better care of this one, mom. Promise. Okay, ink is permanent when heat set. It's also permanent when you get it on your fabric. So every time you touch an ink container, you check your fingers and you make sure you do not have ink on them. Because if you have ink inadvertently on your fingers and then you go to touch your material, you're going to get ink where you do not want it. And you do not want to have that happen. So, oh, see, I'm really ahead of myself tonight. Can we please share my video? If you are enjoying this, please feel free to share it or you can host a watch party with your friends. That's always fun when you get to watch people together. Um, and when we get it out there 10 times, we will give either our project or stuff away. One of the two. It changes. You never know what I'm giving away. No, I do, but yeah, I think I'm straight. I think my welcome guy is straight. So I need to open this ink container. And when I open up an ink container, I am inevitably going to get ink everywhere. So. I move everything out of my way because I do not want ink on everything. And oh look, I'm gonna grab my weeding tool and I'm just gonna go right around and open this up. There is no easy way, I've tried it all, to try to open these containers and not get ink everywhere. Um, but you're, you, you're just gonna be blue when you're done. You just, you gotta accept it. <laughs> There's no other way. But I'm definitely not going to touch my material. So I take a wipe right away and I get my ink off of my fingers. Because I don't... Blue is blue. And now I have it all underneath my fingers. So when I see y'all this weekend, for those of you that I'm going to see this weekend, I'm going to have blue fingers. Usually it comes off in the shower. Okay, so I am working on getting the ink off my finger. Making sure I don't have ink where I don't want it. Okay, checking my fingers so I can go back to my material. Always be conscious of where is your paste container, where is your lid, so as you're moving your fabric around, you're not touching um, the fabric to whatever your container is or your squeegee or something like that. Like that. But, lo and behold, I only have it on the transfer. Where did I even pick that up from? Oh, ladies. Maybe I should have stopped at the one project I already did today. <laughs> Whew, I am so lucky that I went like that and did not go off my transfer. So, now I'm really going to figure out where I got that from. So I don't do it again. But I see ink nowhere. So I don't know where that came from. Alright. So, I have my ink container already over there. Do the inks come in packets? No, Linda, they don't. I was really hoping with the new catalog release they were, oops, they were going to, but they don't. But Linda, um, if you message me if you want to try the ink, I do um, send out little tiny similar things so that you can try the ink. Um, because once you start inking, you will love ink. Every, uh, inking is fun. I think inking is fun. And inking is just as easy as chalking. Um, it's just different. It goes on smoother. You don't have to stir your ink. So your ink is all good to go the minute you open it. Um, it's a little more liquidy. The only thing you do is you have to be more careful with it. So you just dip right in and go. Now your fabric, because it's absorbent versus a chalkboard that is not, will you will use more ink because it absorbs right into your material. Then you do chalk. Um, chalk, you, you, you know, chalk lasts forever. Um, ink tends to last forever just because, unless you're really gonna ink, I don't ink as much 
as I chalk. If I'm going to ink, that's typically tea towels. I do. I make a lot of tea towels, and tea towels are super popular. Oh my goodness, they're super popular. That beeping noise you hear is my Cricut Easy Press, which is how I heat set my ink. So that's what makes ink permanent, is you heat set it. And a Cricut Easy Press is a fancy iron. So you do not need a Cricut Easy Press to do this. It's just a tool that you can use to make the job a little faster. Um, the iron works just fine. So what you would do is once my ink is dry, I am going to iron it basically with my Easy Press. You would iron it just with a regular iron if you didn't have an Easy Press. You will iron it for four minutes on one side and then you will flip it over and you will iron it for four minutes on the other side. And then you would be able to put it in the dishwasher, or dishwasher. <laughs> yes, you can put it in the dishwasher if your material, you know, if you're doing it on a, a glass or a mug or something like that, then you can put it in the dishwasher. This you would put in the washing machine. You would not put this in the dishwasher. Okay, so this is where I'm saying pay a lot of attention to where is my squeegee, where is my paste my ink container and I do I'm sorry I do tend to use the terms interchangeably and I don't mean them that way throw that away because you don't want any renegade ink anywhere now where's my lid there it is and I close my ink up right away because I don't want any remnants of anything anywhere now notice I am not freaking out <laughs> like I usually do about it drying Ink does not dry like paste does, so you don't have to worry about it drying as much. Okay, so I'm checking my fingers. The ink that's on my fingers is dry, so I'm not worried. I, just like with chalk, I start in the middle, or corner, go to the middle, I pull from the middle, and I pull my transfer off, just like normal. Take my transfer, and I slide it right into my water bath. Once my transfer is in my water bath, it is no longer sticky. And I have a super cute pillow. Oh my goodness. Look, at, we, we went from drab to fab just like that. Not that it was drab before because it was a really super cute pillow before, but it's even cuter now. Okay, so now I have to take my ink mats out of the pillow and my ink is wet. So if you're ever looking for an entertaining evening and you have a few glasses of wine, <laughs> there's a video from last October of Maria trying to get her ink mat out of a wet pillow. It is hysterical because, of course, I get ink everywhere. I ruin the pillow. It's just, and you can tell, it's one of my very first videos, I don't know what to do because I'm live and I've ruined this pillow. It's very entertaining. So if you're ever looking for a little boredom, go back to October of last year. Um, so what I do now is I pull my fabric up because again, it's stuck to my ink mat. And I very carefully pull my ink mat out because my ink mat is also going to have ink on it because it will have gone through right into there. Now what I do, although it actually doesn't look too bad. It didn't go through too bad. I stick a, a just a towel in here, any kind of towel because I don't want that, again, that wet side to stick to the other side and get the ink on it because it's not dry yet. So what I have to do is I have to dry the ink so that I can heat set it. Um, it does take a little bit longer to dry the ink than it does to take to dry chalk. But once it's dry, I can heat set it and then I can throw this pillow right in the washing machine. Now, I don't know about you guys, but my accent pillows like this, I don't typically wash. My kids aren't of that age anymore, you know, that they're spitting up and doing those types of things. That I worry about it, that I need to wash it. And I'm kind of fickle in my home decor. So odds are, it's not gonna last that long in my, you know, it's not like I'm gonna love this pillow for 25 years and I'm gonna wash it five million times. So you can, um, Linda, to answer your question a little bit, you can chalk on a pillow. It's just you can't wash it. If you wash it, it'll go away. 
Okay, so now I can take my little towel out because now I'm dry. And now I am ready. Oh, this is super darling. Washing feels overrated, right, Cassidy? Right? Who washes these pillows? I don't. And look, it even has a cute little zipper so you can take your insert in and out and throw it in the washing machine. Ladies, do you wash your throw pillows? I mean, okay, the ones on my bed, because the kids lay on them. I guess I wash those. Yeah, I do. All right. I do wash those, but not the ones that sit on my couch. <laughs> in fact, I could, the pillows that are on my family room couch right now have been here since we bought this house. Six years. I don't think I've ever washed them. Okay. If you're company and you come over now, nobody's ever going to touch those pillows again. All right. So I need to heat set this. So I need my ironing board. So I pull out my handy dandy little ironing board. Stick my little pillow right on it. And I need parchment paper. Which, where's my parchment paper hiding? I had it all ready to go. You just stick a piece, there it is. You stick a piece of parchment paper right over your fabric. Like so. I'm gonna have to do this in two. And I take my easy press. Now again, you're gonna use an iron. With my easy press, I'm literally gonna do this for 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna pick it up and move it to the other side and do that side for 30 seconds. And then I will be heat set. But you can use chalk. So if I didn't have ink and I wanted to make a pillow, I could chalk it. The chalk's not gonna go anywhere. Just like uh, until you wash it. Once you wash it, it'll go away. But I have seen people, like the cute little banners and things that we have, a lot of people just chalk those, they don't ink them. Um, but if you're going to do a t-shirt, you definitely, definitely need ink. Or like a canvas bag, you know, because that you might throw in the washing machine. Sacks, we've done sacks. We've done a lot of pillows. I like pillows. Tea towels, we've done a ton of tea towels. And tea towels you always use ink because you got to wash them. Okay, so I am just heat setting it. it. The easy press is a really nice tool to have. What temp am I using? Hmm. 310. I didn't really look it up. I just used one. Um, I should have probably looked it up. With the easy press, you should use the temperature based on the fabric that you're using. <laughs> so that, just like that, now my fabric is hot. When your ink is heat set, you can feel it, okay? It becomes like it's part of the fabric. You no longer can feel that separation. It's not tacky anymore. It's just like it was always there on the fabric. So then you get a big old pillow insert or, you know, you can stuff it the old fashioned way with the polyfiber filling, however you prefer to um, stuff your pillows. I prefer to just buy these little inserts. Um, and you, they're all over the place. And you just stick it right in. And you're gonna have, a, we're gonna have an adorable little pillow. I mean, this really could not be easier. And the other thing, what I like about this is you can buy just regular everyday pillows. So I have pillows on my bed that I bought that have a design on them, and then I just um, I inked the Good Morning Gorgeous and Hello Handsome right on the pillow, and it has this really pretty little scene on them. Put my finger in there. Okay, look at how cute that is. Now, see, this is just one way to welcome. This would be super cute on a guest room bed. Okay, here, I'm going to give you a better. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this. Look at how cute our little pillow is. Now, I haven't really, you know, pushed him into the corners yet, which I probably should do. He's kind of hanging out in the corner here. So just get, you, you know, you got to manipulate your pillow insert to get it where it's supposed to be. This is a super cute little pillow. That'd be adorable on a guest room bed. Absolutely adorable. And boom, you got a pillow insert. So this is our little project. Oh, you can't, see? That's what happens when I get fancy and I start moving things around. Um, I like this pillow insert. So I've also learned the trick to pillow inserts is buy the uh, filler an inch or two larger 
than your cover. So buy your insert an inch or two larger than your cover, and then you'll have a nice, big, plump, happy pillow. If you, if you get them too skinny, then they don't, um, they don't, you know, this is a nice, plump, this is a healthy pillow. <laughs> it's a good pillow. So that's our cute little welcome. And it's just navy ink. Took us two seconds to make. Um, I've yapped more than it's taken. And it's really, really super cute. All right, so that's our project for the evening for Thankful Thursday. Um, when our video is shared 10 times, we will give fun things away. Um, but this is our super cute little pillow. I do have another project to make, so you're welcome to stick around. And I am going to use ink for that as well. So you get to watch the process all over again. Um, but this is really the conclusion of this evening's. Now I'm just chalking for fun. And it's more fun to chalk with you guys than for me to chalk all by myself. So the next project that I'm making is a tea towel. And I'm actually making it for a friend. Who, oh, is she watching? Hmm. I don't, nope, she's not here. Whew. Well, it's not like she doesn't know I'm making it. I think she knows I'm making it. I told her I was going to make it. But a thankful Thursday a couple weeks ago, we made a tea towel. And I have a friend that was in love with the tea towel. So I told her I would make her another one. Love this pillow. Oh my gosh. This is adorable. I can't give this one away. I'm just kidding. I could give it away. I have another one. I could make another one, I suppose. <laughs> I'm going to put our cute little pillow right back here so you guys can oogle and ogle over it while I make an adorable towel. So you, th you're, this will look familiar to you because we've made this before. So these are towels, very, very nice tea towels that I got. They're pink and gray, and they have this super cute little lace on the bottom. And we are going to put um, a big transfer on the bottom. Usually, not that one, but I'm just setting that there. Usually we put... Um, you know, small transfers so that you can fold the towel. Sometimes, though, you can put big transfers. So you don't have to do always do small because a lot of people don't fold up their kitchen towels, right? They put them um, over, like, the handle of your stove. So you don't have to fold it up, you know, because there's those towels that we use, <laughs> and there's those towels that look pretty, right? mom I love you mom but yeah there's the towels we use and then there's the towels that all the trust I can guarantee you people all the towels in my house get used <laughs> there is no pretty towel <laughs> I have three boys yeah there's no such thing as a pretty towel in my house so this is a very big sticky ink mat and I'm going to use this one because this transfer is large and I'm going to stick this under here Oh, Verge loved this towel too. Oh, yep, Debbie, you know who I'm making this for. Um, when I was in Texas, one of my Texas friends loved it. She was talking about it, and I'm like, I'll just make you one. It's not like it's that big of a deal. I can I can whip one of those up. No, I just had the transfer in my hand. <laughs> what did I do with the transfer? Don't you wonder about me, ladies? There it is. Um, so I'm just remaking this one. So... I do tend to make, when I make towels, I do tend to make more than one. This was a thankful Thursday project. This bad boy got shared, and he did get given away. Um, so I do have another towel. So if we share our video, we could give one of these towels away. I could make another one. This one is, ooh, this is my icky one. I ruined this transfer. I, what did I stick it to? Oh, remember? Oh, that debacle. Oh. That rookie mistake I made, I stuck it to a metal container that had been spray painted, and all the spray paint came off. So, I have another one of these somewhere over the rainbow. Where would it be? Okay, uno momento. Here, read all about Chalk Couture while I try to find the other transfer. Because it's here somewhere. Hang on. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, oh, if it's in the other room, then we will. We will make it separately then if it's in the other room, because then it's really not close. 
There's a lot of transfers in my house, and they just... A lot of transfers in my house. They just kind of keep growing. I keep trying to find ways to come up with to store them, because I have them everywhere. Alright, yeah, it's in the other room. So, I won't make you guys wait while I try to find it. Because this, and, you know, you don't, I don't, how much you want to keep reading that same thing? Yeah, you don't want to keep reading that same thing. Um... Well, it is ink, though. We could probably still use this one. So, as you can see, this is what a ru this is what a ruined transfer looks like. So, see on the back of my transfer, you see all that white stuff? That's the paint. So, I took this transfer and I attached it to a metal flower. It was a hanging thing that was metal, like a galvanized metal. And I put it on there, not realizing that it was a painted galvanized. It was kind of distressed, though, so I really should have known, but I didn't pay enough attention. And um, it pulled all the paint off of the galvanized when I did that. You know, we're just going to use this one. So you can, just because it transfers in a super sticky, or maybe we're not because I can't get this one open either. We haven't used ink in a while. So I bang them when I can't get them open. Um, this is storm paste or ink. Checking my fingers, making sure I know where everything is, just like normal. Hey, Robin, Cheryl, Cheryl, Robin, how the heck are you? Are you all softballed out? Holy cow, those girls have got you busy running around watching softball. You and their grandma. Okay, so it wasn't straight. So I did all that, you know, smooshing down, and it wasn't straight. Either that or my towel's not straight. One of the two. Which I think is probably more the issue. My towel's not straight. So, I am. So, Cheryl, it is nice to see you. No, it's Robin. <laughs> Robin. This is why I call you Robin, Cheryl, Cheryl, Robin. It's Robin. Hello, Robin. Did you get rain? Oh, it's no, it rained this afternoon. You didn't get rained out of baseball. Softball. I always call it baseball. It makes my daughter very angry when I call it baseball. It's not baseball. It's softball. You're running around a baseball diamond. It's baseball. <laughs> but it's not. That's just like when my son would do um, cross country and I called it track. Oh, my gosh. You want to make a freshman in high school annoyed? Call his cross country track. <laughs> All season. <laughs> you know, ladies, do I look like I was athletic as a child? No. I can barely chew gum and walk at the same time. There is no athleticism in this body. There's no coordination. Where I got children that want to do sports from, it's got to be their fathers in them, right? Because it would not be their mother. Although I did, I have played an immense amount of games of pig, for those of you who are familiar with the basketball game pig, where you have to shoot and um, score and then you... Um, you try to eliminate the other player. Well, I have played a lot of pig this week because my son is kind of home all by himself with his sister gone and his brothers have been gone. So, I played a lot of pig. And I have to say, I still got some basketball moves. <laughs> Alright, so this transfer is not sticky. So, it'll be curious to see... Um, if I'm getting a bleed. So I'm being careful when I squeegee to not, you know, do it five million times and go in lots of different directions. Kind of stick in one direction and then you, you eliminate some of the possibility for bleeding when your transfer doesn't stick anymore. So just because you ruin it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you can't find another use for it. Like this would be the transfer if I was going to stick it to slate. And I did actually do this transfer on slate and it's stunningly gorgeous on slate. Um, I used this one because I didn't want to ruin it. Can you imagine if I ruined two of these transfers? Oh my gosh, I would be. So who, did anybody play tonight? I know Caroline played last night and won. Did Lizzie play tonight? It's fun to go. I, I really enjoy watching softball as compared to other sports. Um, 
I think girls softball is very interesting. And it's fast paced, it's fast moving. The girls are good. At least on my daughter's team they are. And you know, she has an amazing coach. My husband's a coach, so I can say that. She has an amazing coach. Okay, so I, I don't want to do exactly what I'm doing and I need to tell myself to stop, but I don't want to go over it five million times because I know it's not stuck down. Again, I take my ink, I put it far away from my fabric, I take my squeegee that's in my hand, I do not set it down, I wipe it off and I clean it immediately because I also have ink all over my fingers, I can feel it. Um, so I just wash off my squeegee. Now we're going to hope that I didn't ruin a, a nice, beautiful towel by thinking I could use this transfer. Okay, check my fingers. Nope. Night off, but practice. Tomorrow we start a weekend turn. Oh, good lord. Okay, so I'm just going to pull my transfer right off. Oh, and it's perfect. Not a bleed. Stick it in my water bath. I'm sure they just lay it next to my... So this is a super cute, pretty little towel. I'm going to dry it. In order to dry it, I take remove my ink mat. So even though your transfers aren't always sticky, you know, for most people they stay sticky because you're not using them as many times as I'm using them. Um, but when a transfer no longer is sticky, you can still use it. You just have to be careful. So now I'm just drying my ink. I have one little spot, and I'll show you, where I did not push the ink down, uh, I'll show you, where the, I didn't push the ink through enough on the W. See how it's got a little, it's faint there? The way to fix that, you can do this with ink much easier than you can do this with chalk. Um, I just stick it right in a paintbrush and paint it on. The reason you can do this with ink is because you're heat setting it so you're not having the same um, surface you know where you need this certain amount of smooth because that's the problem with painting on chalk is because of the silk screen it's not as smooth when you use a paintbrush so to me it's more obvious oops there's I got a spot on the E too it's more obvious when you use a paintbrush on chalk but on ink, it's not because it's not um, it's not a smoothness because you're going to heat set it anyway. Okay, so now I fixed my little spots where I didn't push my ink through far enough. I just washed my little paintbrush off right in my disinfectant wipe. Again, I put everything away because I don't want ink on anything, and I'm going to dry it. It's a super sweet little towel. Makes me almost want to do dishes. <laughs> I don't really think a little towel can make you want to do dishes. Do you? No. Dishwashers. Like children that wash dishes. They make me want to do it. I'm just drying it so that I can heat set it. You do need to be dry. Otherwise, you just get gunky and icky. Doesn't take long. It just takes a little bit longer than your paste does. Paste dries super fast. But I think part of the issue is you put your uh, ink on more thick. Then you put your paste or your chalk on. Chalk doesn't go as thick. Okay, so again, I'm gonna stick this right under my. I'm gonna put it right on my ironing board. I'm gonna put my parchment paper right over it. Now, if you were ironing it, in order to heat set. Oh, that's hang on, the wrong one. If you're gonna heat set it. You're gonna heat set it with a dry iron for four minutes, and you're going to iron it. For four minutes. The reason that you have to do it for four minutes is because your heat, your iron has hot spots and most irons have the little holes in them for steam, that kind of stuff. Where my Cricut Easy Press is a flat 
even heat um, press. So you don't have to um, have those same issues. Plus it's an even consistency because I'm not putting it on a cotton setting. I'm telling it what temperature I want it to be. Maria, let's not talk crazy. Hmm, Verge, what are we talking crazy about? Doing dishes? No, we don't do dishes. No, no, no. I'm going to get to see you this weekend, Verge. I'm very excited about that. We're going to have a fun weekend. Very fun weekend. Lots of family this weekend, which is good. My daughter comes home from camp tomorrow. Her brother went to bed when I kissed him goodnight the first time when he wasn't supposed to come back down here. And he's like, oh, my Ella comes home tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, she comes home tomorrow. Yay! Okay, so I'm just giving it a little extra zhuzh. I pull off my parchment paper. It's warm when you do this. And I can feel it, and it's just like it's part of the fabric. There's no tacky, there's no sticky, it's just in the fabric. So now I can throw this bad boy in the washing machine and it's going to stay beauteous, beauteous, beauteous. So those are my two inking projects. Inking is lots and lots of fun. Oh, I was gonna back up here. So if you're gonna heat set fabric, you iron it for four minutes, you flip it over, you iron the other side for four minutes. It is boring. You know, and four minutes is way longer than set a timer because you really need the four minutes. Um, so throw a video on of somebody talking. It's always fun to, you know, have some entertainment while you're ironing. It's not so bad. My easy press was broken for quite a while, so I had to iron and you get over the whole ironing for four minutes. Um, if you're going to ink on glass or ceramics or a stainless steel water bottle, anything that you can put in an oven... You can heat set that as well and then you can put the items in the dishwasher. If you're going to do that, then you heat set them in an iron or in an oven for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. You put the item in the oven, you turn the oven on 350 degrees, leave it in there for 30 minutes, turn your oven off, let it come back to room temperature all on its own, take it out and then you can throw them in the washing machine. But for our purposes today, this is fabric. So you just iron it. And just like that, you would think that this was made professionally and that it was always part of the fabric. When you do a tea towel and it doesn't have like this pretty little lace bottom, so we know this is the bottom, always check because a good tea towel will have a hanger and that is your top. So you want to make sure that you put your design on the bottom or wherever you want it, but you just want to be conscious of where your top is so that you could literally just, you know, hang this from a hook in your kitchen. Those are our two cute little projects for the evening. Oops, dropping things. We have got yet another welcome and we got a flower market. <laughs> I do this so that when the picture of the video pops up, it's the picture of what we made. But anyway, I'm you don't, don't care. So this is our cute little project. I'm making Maria, your independent chalk couture designer. If you would like to see any of these products, how you do that is you go to www.chalkcouture.com slash making Maria. And you can see this is the welcome. What's it called? Well, this one's the flower market collection. And this one is the welcome script. So those are the two transfers that we used. Stupid, but what does the back look like? Not stupid at all, Linda. So yeah, depending on how much ink you use and what how thick your fabric is, your back isn't always pretty. I will say that. It's not always pretty on the back, especially if you use a flower sack towel because they're so thin. Oh my goodness, they're so thin. And I don't know of any way to get rid of that when it seeps through um, but yeah it will seep through and it does that when you do a t-shirt it does that depending on canvas bags not always because sometimes the canvas is so thick that it doesn't go through but it does depend on the thickness of your material so if you don't want you know it to seep through on the back then just make sure you and this is a pretty thick towel make sure you pick out a pretty thick material or make your own towels I've got customers that do that as well they make their own towels um, and then they do it. Okay, so I'm making Maria. This is where you can see the product. Please share my video. 
if you share my video and it goes gets shared 10 times we will give fun things away we'll play a game that anybody can play and then we will uh, give fun stuff away so I'm making Maria your independent truck tour designer thanks so much for watching me tonight I hope you have a lovely lovely evening and a fantastic weekend there won't be a video tomorrow because I will be traveling for my family event this weekend and I'll be gone all weekend. So no projects again till probably Monday. Sorry, ladies. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll miss you all. Have a good one. See you. Bye.